Hi, this is Hannah, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. Each episode focuses on a topic to do with personal development and self-growth. For more information about Becoming Who You Are, you can look at the website, which is at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also email me with your questions and comments at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. So, so far, we've talked about what personal development is, who it's for, what authenticity is about, and I thought today I'd talk about some of the challenges that I've certainly faced and I've heard from other people that they've faced too when engaging in personal development and deepening their level of authenticity. I really hope this won't be a deterrent to authentic living, and I really, really don't mean it to be. Rather, in my experience, We engage in personal development with a lot of expectations and ideals about what life will be like during and after, and it can be a really, really hard come down when those expectations or ideals aren't realised. I've thought about five challenges that I have direct and indirect experience with, both through encountering them myself and hearing about other people's experiences with them. Um, The common thread that comes up in all these situations has been this feeling that we're the only ones it's happening to. So um, when, I was, when I was engaging in my personal development, I would look at other people who said that they were doing the same and I would see that they, were, they just seemed really happy all the time and really together and they seemed to really enjoy sitting down and doing things like journaling and um, meditation and things like that. And I didn't always experience it like that. Like I, I felt a lot of resistance to doing these sometimes and I, I would compare myself to these other people and think, well there must be something wrong with me or I must be doing it wrong because they all seem to be getting on really fine. I definitely felt like I was the only one and I would look at these people and look at myself and I I did feel resistant sometimes and I I did find it difficult to really kind of uh, sit down and do it and to sit with my feelings. And I, I felt very alone in that experience because it did feel at the time like I was the only one it was happening to. So I want to share these challenges in the hope that if you experience these things or similar things, you'll know that you're not at all alone and that there are people out there who will have had the same or similar experiences before you and that it's a really, really, really common thing, I think. The first challenge I thought of, um, and one which is probably the most serious in terms of long-term repercussions, is that personal development can potentially change dynamics in relationships. And this can be a really, really positive thing, as long as both people in the relationship are on board. Um, However, when one person's engaging in personal development and the other isn't, this this is where problems can come up. Um, The latter person might not want anything to change, they might feel threatened by the change and react strongly to it. And I've heard people say before that they actively don't want to enter into therapy because they're worried about it affecting their relationship. And that's understandable because it really could. When I became more accepting of myself, I realised that some people around me were not accepting of me the way that I was. Um, and that led to me re-evaluating those relationships. When I became more aware of what my feelings, needs and preferences were, Some people welcomed that with open arms, which was incredibly validating, and other people really didn't, and in some cases that did affect my relationship with them. This is more likely to show up in long-term relationships, I think, where patterns, dynamics and roles are more established, and each person in the relationship has an expectation about how those patterns, dynamics and roles are going to play out. In this way, when we're in a long-term relationship with someone, whether that's a a romantic partner, a friendship, a family member, you know, even a work colleague, um, we almost forge this unconscious deal with the person we're in that relationship with based on past behaviour, and that's where these expectations come from. So when one person starts developing their self-awareness and living more authentically, in a sense, they're potentially breaking that unspoken deal. Having established a relationship... Dynamic change can be surprising and even scary for anyone, whether they're the changee or the person witnessing the change. But I think it's how people react to that change that is really important. Either they'll be supportive of you in your personal growth, or they might be too scared of the repercussions to really support you. And the latter can be really, really tough. The second challenge comes from our own resistance to self-awareness and personal growth. 
And this is all about defences. When we develop defences, we develop them for very good reasons. It can be embarrassing and painful to acknowledge these defences, and it can also leave us feeling incredibly vulnerable and exposed to not act on them. It can also be difficult to look at why these defences have developed in the first place, as in some situations, it can lead us to re-evaluate our childhood experiences and family stories or myths. We might also have certain beliefs about ourselves, other people and the world that are familiar and therefore more comfortable to sit with than alternatives, even if they're not necessarily grounded in reality. So, for example, if I, um, this is just a generalised example, but if my parents go through different marriages during my childhood, so they both have two or more marriages each, I might grow up with the belief that relationships don't last and therefore... I, I will unconsciously avoid developing real intimacy with partners or feel a sense of inevitability that the relationship will end at some point. Equally, in a different example, if I'm raised to believe that a subject like fine art isn't a proper career, I might be less likely to end up choosing art as a career no matter how passionate I feel about it. We've all heard the cliche, boys don't cry. And even though we know that men are perfectly capable of producing tears, it's still a pretty strong male stereotype, even today. So what does this mean for a man who believes that, but can't control his tears in certain situations? It could be a pretty uncomfortable place to be, because he has this belief that boys don't cry, yet his emotions are telling him something very, very different. When we challenge conditioned or unhelpful beliefs, this can take us way, way outside our comfort zone. The third challenge comes from a fear of going into the unknown. Uncertainty can be a very difficult thing to live with, and I know this for myself, this is definitely something that I still struggle with. And when we start introspecting and learning more about ourselves and gaining knowledge about why we are the way we are, we don't know what we're going to find. And that might, un that might sit uncomfortably with us. We might not particularly like what we discover. We might find out things that bring up difficult emotions for us. Not only that, but there is the factor that once we learn something, we can't then unlearn it. You know, we have that knowledge now, and it can be very difficult to know what to do with that sometimes. So the fourth challenge that I thought of comes from our own expectations of what our personal development is going to be like. We've just talked about uncertainty and how that can be really difficult to sit with sometimes. And I think perhaps one of the ways of getting around that is to assuage our fears by creating expectations and saying things like, well, I think in six months' time, my life is going to look like this and I'm going to have achieved this and I'm going to be this kind of person. And visualising an ideal life in the future can be really helpful, especially if we're unsure of our goals or what we want from certain areas of our life. Um, however, holding that visualisation as an expectation can lead to us setting ourselves up for failure. And we might have ideas about what we want to get out of our personal development, what we want to achieve by becoming more authentic, but ultimately we don't know how it's really going to pan out. We don't know what's going to happen. Personal development takes patience and time, and there might be periods when it does feel totally unrewarding. There's still part of me that would love to have a light bulb moment where everything becomes clear and the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle just sort of come together magically. But as I've discovered, insight doesn't happen that way, at least not in my experience anyway. It's a journey full of peaks and troughs, hits and misses, tiny drips here and there. And I found that if I'm particularly resistant to an idea, I have to have an insight several times over before it really sinks in. Something I've found challenging over time as well, and this is something that might affect people who are achievement orientated, as I am, is that there's not a certificate for completing your personal development. You don't get to go through graduation, you don't get to take the final exam, and there's no real distinct endpoint. It's an ongoing process that requires us to be continually conscious and aware of what's happening, and this can be quite challenging. The last challenge, the fifth challenge I want to talk about, is that of resources. Personal development requires a lot of time and energy, which is time and energy that you then can't devote to other activities such as relaxing or playing with your cat or bike riding or painting or reading or dancing, singing, or whatever it is you like to do. 
And that can be tough because it's it's a little bit like building up a gym routine where when, when you start, you sort of have that, you know, oh, I, you don't really want to do it, but you know that you should. And it's just, it's a question of kind of building up a habit until it gets to a point where it's then part of your life. Depending on whether you choose to go to therapy or not, um, personal development can also be very expensive financially. However, if you have been thinking about doing it, that shouldn't necessarily be something that stops you or is a prohibitive factor because many therapists do offer a sliding fee scale, which can be really, really helpful. And there's no, not necessarily any difference in the sessions that they're offering. It's just that if you are having problems financially or you're on a lower salary or you're a student or so on, a lot of therapists do offer a discounted rate. So those are the main challenges I could think of, and I would love to hear any thoughts you have on this. You can tell me what you think by emailing hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net, or by visiting the Becoming Who You Are website at www.becomingwhoyouare.net and leaving a comment on the blog there. So just before we finish, I wanted to talk about this episode's resource. Um, And this is one that I discovered fairly recently. I think I've been listening since last September. It's a podcast and radio show called Pork Therapy. Pork Therapy is run by Stephanie, who, in addition to being a fantastic podcaster and radio host, is also a lovely, lovely person. The show covers a wide range of topics to do with psychology and personal freedom, and it includes current news topics as well as broader social issues as well. So I highly recommend checking out Pork Therapy. Uh, You can find it on iTunes and an archive of the show by going to www.porctherapy.com. I think if you go to P-O-R-K Therapy, you'll also get redirected to the right website. But it's pork as in porcupine, so it's porctherapy.com. I've gotten a huge amount out of the podcast, and it's definitely opened my mind to new ideas about myself and the world we live in. So I hope you'll go and take a look. Thanks so much for listening. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch, you can do this by emailing me at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net or by going to www.becomingwhoyouare.net and sending me a message through the website or leaving a comment on the blog. I look forward to talking to you again very soon.